Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. This is Modesty33 here, aka Crystal with the C. Back at you with another video. If you're new to my channel, you just happen to click on. Welcome, welcome, welcome. I try to put out one or two videos a week, but we're not going to talk about that, guys, because I've been on a little bit of a break. I'm going to explain to you in this video why. So hopefully, you'll stick around and hopefully, you guys will enjoy my life update as well as the topic of this video that we're going to get into. So wanted to share with you guys kind of the reason why I've been on a bit of a break and it's no real complex explanation it's just the fact that I didn't really have any inspiration for anything to film I haven't purchased anything luxury even though I do still plan on purchasing luxury things but I'm getting ready for a trip soon which my birthday is coming up and it is the big birthday it is the big 4-0 so the big 40 is coming up soon so I'm preparing for that. So not wanting to buy anything major until I get back from that trip and see how much money I spend, what I get into, then I can kind of make more viable decisions as it relates to when and what I'm going to add to my collection. I do still plan on adding like two luxury jewelry pieces. And those will probably be my last two pieces from Cartier that I'm wanting to add to my jewelry collection at this time. And then there is one bag from a brand that I don't currently own that I'm looking at as well. I've been looking at that bag since getting back from London and I still am very much interested in it, but I'm only interested in the bag in one particular color. So again, I'm not going to really talk too much about that because whenever I get back from overseas, my vacation, birthday vacation coming up, then I can better explain to you guys what I purchased and how I feel about the items at that point in time. So I'm still keeping an eye on that particular bag, but again, I don't know definitively if I'm gonna get it until after I get back from, and uh, I'm just gonna go ahead and share, I'm going to Paris, so yeah. So when I get back from Paris, then I'll be able to let you guys know and kind of see if I'm able to find the bag there or if I'm just gonna buy it here or if I'm even still gonna wanna buy it when I get back from Paris. So there is a brand, like I said, that I don't own and I'm looking at that particular bag, but there are also a few bags from Hermes that I am interested in, non-quota bags, but bags nonetheless. And if I'm able to get an appointment at Hermes, then I would definitely more so defer to one of those bags. It's really one of two bags that I'm looking at from Hermes. And if they did, if I was able to get a leather appointment, which, you know, fat chance, but we'll see. So if I'm able to get a leather appointment, number one, and then number two, if they have either of those two bags in stock when I go, then yeah, that would take preference over the other bag that I'm looking at, again, from the brand that I don't currently own. Just because I do still look at resale value as it relates to bags, and if it's not one of the top you know, three brands, I believe that's still Hermes, still Chanel, and still Louis Vuitton, then yeah, the resale value definitely varies. Even with Chanel, I feel like the, retail, the resale value does vary on those bags. But yeah, Hermes is pretty tried and true and consistent. I do like the Hermes bags that I still own in my collection. So yeah, I wouldn't be opposed to adding any more of those. So like I said, those would take preference. So again, I haven't purchased anything. I am looking at a few different bags. I do definitely still want those two jewelry pieces. But other than that, I haven't purchased anything luxury. But another update, you guys, I am currently debt free. So <laughs> that happened back in April. So yeah, like I've just been chilling. I've been chilling. I've been eating out. I've been having a good little time. It's just, I don't know. I'm in a weird limbo space because I guess you would think that you know, a lot of people aspire to be debt free, which is a good aspiration. And it's like, oh yes, I finally made it. So it's like, okay, well now I wanna do this thing or I wanna do that thing. But there's not really a necessarily a thing that I necessarily want to do. I just kinda wanna chill because it took so much work and effort to get to the place of being debt free. So now it's just like, I wanna be generous. I want to be laid back. I want to not want for anything, so to speak. So that's why I've been really slowing down on the luxury items as well, because I just wanna be happy with what I have. And even I've looked at downsizing from what I have even a bit more, even though I don't necessarily need the money at this moment in time. But 
like again i still work from home so i do still try to be conscientious of things that i am using and things that i'm not using and if i feel like things aren't being used i do want them to leave my closet because like i said there are still things i want but now i think being debt free i no longer feel the pressure i like that i felt before of acquiring certain things which is very strange so <laughs> it's, it's a very strange feeling because now it's like oh yeah i do want that but I don't need that. So whatever, I don't care. I'm gonna go down to the restaurant and, and have me a nice lunch. So, so that's kind of where I'm at right now. But I have actually purchased some things recently that were not luxury items. I don't know if you guys are interested in that, but I did recently uh, purchase a trip. So I did do like a Priceline deal to Dallas and the Priceline deal included a a uh, hotel as well as a rental car as well as the flight to Dallas because from I'm in Houston so from Houston to Dallas is like about three hours 40 minutes or about four hours if you round up but I don't have the temperament to drive I really I very rarely get on the interstate I'm actually just getting to a point of getting on the interstate because now I kind of sort of have to with something else I'm going to update you guys on but I don't use the interstate here it's just a lot going on I'm used to three no more than four lanes of interstate when I lived in South Carolina but here in Houston it's like you know four three lanes and then it'll come out to five lanes and then it'll transform to eight lanes and then it's like you got to shift between lanes in order to make sure you're in the correct lane for the exit you're not exiting somewhere you're not supposed to be so it's a lot of shifting that i'm not used to and therefore i don't like the interstate here i prefer to just drive through town it's a bit more leisurely and it's scenic <laughs> it takes longer but it is kind of a scenic route so i'm just now getting back adjusted to taking the interstate and being that that's the case the furthest i can really drive on the interstate is one hour and for me one hour is like galveston so i've been to galveston a few times but last time was my birthday last year uh there's not really a whole lot in Galveston I want to see so it's not like a scenic place so yeah like I did the package deal to Dallas and that was last weekend for me but um again I will I did do like a get ready with me but I didn't unfortunately get a lot of footage because it was just a lot of weird stuff going on with that trip so I went from like a Thursday to a Sunday and there were issues in every single aspect of this of this trip and it has nothing to do with Priceline or the booking it's just the flight was an issue the rental vehicle acquiring that was an issue and then on certain days the hotel was an issue though it was a beautiful hotel and I would definitely stay there again so I did do that recently that was a package deal trip that I did to Dallas and I recently was able to sell my Louis Vuitton Neverfull so I just used the money from the Neverfull to do that package deal to Dallas and then I did spend extra money on like rental insurance and as well as parking when I got to Dallas. So incidental such as that, of course, food and things like that, but didn't buy anything in Dallas. I just kind of went and then I went to a conference there. So yeah, that I did that recently as like my last trip of my 30s and good riddance. I'm glad to be back home. The other thing that I purchased, which is where we're getting into uh, the meat and potatoes of this video is, guys, you probably can't tell, but I earlier this week got my hair locked. So uh, I do have micro locks. I talked about it in one of my videos that it was something that I really was interested in. However, there were a lot of other factors that I was kind of talking myself out of as it related to micro locks. And that's why I was like, oh, I don't think this is for me. I don't think I'm going to do it. But guys, I just went ahead and did it. And this has been something I've seriously been thinking about since mid-April. And I did a lot of research and decided on what I actually wanted. And even I would say leading up to my consultations with different locticians, I still didn't really know, have a good idea of what I wanted because I was seeing so many different things. There's so much content on YouTube, so much on Instagram. So it does get a lot, very confusing when you're looking at 
um, different people, how their locks look, how they mature over time, and thinking about what you want for yourself. So this is kind of, again, the meat and potatoes of this video. I did just want to spend the first part of it giving you guys a life update as far as why I haven't been filming. But I want to get into my decision to lock my hair, kind of what went into it, what I'm looking forward to and just kind of the, the process in totality. So again, like I mentioned before, starting off with like the process. So back in April is when I was seriously thinking about, okay, locking my hair, but I have actually been thinking about this for the past year. There are a couple people I follow on YouTube. There's a YouTuber in London, um, I've been following her. There's actually one who's locally here in Houston, Texas, which I did not know until recently, and that goes into kind of how I found my loctician. So there's one, she actually, her mother DIY'd her micro locks. So she didn't get hers installed by the same lady that I've got mine installed from, but I believe she goes to this lady now for reties. So, and if there's information here that doesn't sound, you don't know what that means, Probably in future videos, I will explain this more if you guys are interested. But again, I'm inviting you into aspects of my life. So this is something that may interest some people. But if it doesn't interest you, it's, it's quite all right. It just recently interested me. So I understand. But yeah, last year I was looking at a few people who were locked and who had these micro locks, you know, because I'm used to what people call sister locks. But I didn't know there was a differentiation between sister locks and micro locks. So what I have are micro locks. I did consider sister locks. However, the thing you have to keep in mind when you're looking at locking your hair is you have to know what your hair type is. You have to know the density to get an idea of what your hair will look like when it matures. So when I was looking at the difference between sister locks and micro locks, there are again differences. There are differences in price. There are differences in the skill and what is required as far as someone installing sister locks and the uniformity that's required with sister locks versus the flexibility that comes with micro locks. So I was looking at all of these things and considering that typically if you're going to get sister locks installed, it is going to be more expensive than if you're going to do micro locks because again, you have more flexibility of options in the installation process of micro locks. So yeah, when I was doing my research, I still didn't know. I'm like, oh, I, you know, there were certain periods of time I was like, okay, I want sister locks. And then other periods I was like, I don't really necessarily care about a particular grid. I don't care about interlocking as it relates to the sister lock method of installation. I don't really care about that. I just want them to look a particular way. And so one of the things that was very important to me as it related to locks was the fact that a lot of times when I see different people who have locks, especially if their locks are very long, this is no offense to anybody. Um, this is just my observation and it could be related to hair density and texture. But a lot of times I look at people and it looks like almost like they have a flat head or something. And when I say flat head, like I'm used to, as a natural, I've been natural for 14 years, I'm used to my hair having volume and body. Like you see, this is again what my hair looks like now and it's shrunken because again, she did the installation and she, she did my installation on blown out hair, but she did spray it after the fact. So this is like shrunken natural hair, but you can see it has quite a bit of volume and body. Whereas, when I was seeing people when their locks mature, especially like the four or five year mark, it seems like their hair has become like straight, natural, like, well, it's kind of like straight, straight hair essentially, without any type of volume or body. And that's not what I wanted for me. Now, again, I don't know what my hair is gonna look like at the end of the day when it does actually mature and fully locks. Maybe I am gonna have somewhat of that look and that's why one of the things I'm considering as well is the length that I'm willing my willing to have my hair grow to before cutting it and what length I feel is um, appropriate for me to maintain. So that's kind of one of the things I'm thinking about as well. Like if I start getting that flat head look, maybe cutting them so I can maintain some volume. But that was kind of one of the considerations. So again, there are a few people I've been following the past year. I really like their locks. Both of them would be considered micro locks. The one girl got hers installed 
I believe in Africa or Nigeria, she got hers installed. The other girl, her mother DIY'd her, uh, DIY'd her Microlux installation. So those were two people I looked at and I was like, oh my gosh, I really love their hair. It's so beautiful. And so I've been following them the past year, but then again, I talk myself out of it because you do have to put money, invest money, not just in the installation of locks, but in the maintenance of them as well. So last year, I wasn't quite ready for that. Again, was on my debt-free journey. So I was like, I can't be adding more expenses to what I'm trying to do now when I'm trying to pay off debt. And so now that I've paid off debt, I kind of... Back in April was when I paid off my debt and I kind of like really thought about this as maybe this could be like a gift to myself as it relates to a new natural hair journey going into year 40 of my life. So back in April, like I said, I did a lot of research between sister locks, micro locks, the sizing, all the things that impact the sizing. So I was able to schedule three consultations because you do have to do consultations before you get the installation of whether it's micro locks, sister locks, or even regular locks. You do have to have a consultation. So because I knew I was gonna be going to Dallas during Memorial Day weekend, I looked at a loctician in Dallas and the loctician I was looking at in Dallas was like literally 10 minutes from the hotel and I did not plan that. There was just a particular hotel that I really wanted and when I kind of map quested or not map quest, map quest, I'm aging myself now. But when I did the Google Maps or Apple Maps from the hotel to the loctician, the, the beauty or yeah, the, the shop, the hair salon, it was like 12 minutes. So it was really close. So I was like, oh, this is doable. And they did a one day installation because they have multiple people working on your hair while um, like, yeah, during that period of time. So the girl told me it is a one day installation, but it was like a $500 deposit, non-refundable. So you can't just tell them like, oh yeah, I'm gonna be here and I wanna schedule. Like you do have to invest the money, like I said, on the front end and it is non-refundable. So you have to be serious about getting this installation or you're gonna lose this money. So I did the first consultation with the salon uh, in Dallas and I did a virtual consultation it was what, like $25, I think. So I did the virtual consultation, talked to the lady. Um, I didn't measure my hair at the time because some of the things that impact the pricing of the locks is the length of your hair. So I didn't like measure how long my hair was at the time. So she estimated 16 inches. And then I sent her pictures of what my hair looked like. And she was like, yeah, you got a lot of hair. So she estimated 16 inches, but I actually don't have 16 inches of hair. When I got it measured, it's between 12 and 14 inches. So the price she gave me was like approximately 1300. And that was to do, I believe two strand twists. So the way the lock, the starter lock method that they use at that salon was either they could do braids or they could do two strand twists. I did not, I don't like braids guys. Like I just don't, I did not like the braided style. And what all three, cause I did three consultations, but what all three locticians told me is that the braids take the longest to, for the pattern to disappear as your hair locks. So maybe some of you might find that not to be true, but this is what three different locticians did tell me that like they don't really like to start locks with braids because that pattern stays in people's hair a lot of times anywhere from two to five years after they've gotten the installation. So I didn't like that anyway because what I noticed with people who get their locks started with braids, and again, I'm not speaking universally for everybody, I'm just saying the people that I saw online who got their locks started through braids, is that it seems like, again, like their hair looks a bit thinner. And again, it could be related to density, like it, it seems like they don't have fullness. And I, again, what was important to me was fullness. So yeah, about 1300 was the first loctician's quote. And that was one day installation. And that was with two strand twists. So had that quote, but the issue with me getting it done with Dallas, even though it would be quicker, it would be more convenient since I was already there, is the fact that if I got my install in Dallas, I still am coming back to Houston. So I still need a local person who's going to pick up the slack and do my reties. So for which is again, your maintenance. So a lot of times I was doing research, a lot of people don't like to 
take tra what we call transfer clients. So that's essentially when a person, you get your install somewhere else, whether you do it yourself or another loctician does it, and then you transfer to another loctician. You do have to like, again, pay a consultation for being a transfer client. And a lot of times people don't take transfers if they didn't start working on your hair from the inception. So that was kind of an issue. And that's why ultimately I decided not to go with that loctician in Dallas, even though I felt like the price was reasonable and it would have been even cheaper since I didn't have 16 inches of hair. That's just what she estimated. So second consultation then was with a local person here in Houston that I found on Instagram. Her location was really good. She's like in a kind of, she has like one of those booths in like a salon building. Yeah, a building that has other hair people. And you know, she has like her own room essentially that she does hair. And it was like next to a Target. So I felt like the location was pretty good. And it was like 30 minutes from my apartment when, if you didn't take the interstate. But it's, yeah, so it was like 30 minutes from my apartment. I was familiar with the area. And like, she is a certified like sister lock consultant. I don't think she's on the website anymore, but she did take the course so she can install sister locks. So I went in my research, I did know that typically when people are registered or licensed sister lock consultants, they do charge more for all of their services, which is fine, it's, it's my hair. So as long as you're doing it okay, like I don't necessarily care about paying more, but I, that I was aware that somebody who's not a licensed sister lock consultant is gonna be cheaper than somebody who is a licensed sister lock consultant or who was at least at one point licensed to, you know, who was on the website for the sister lock consultants. So I went to her, she did look through my hair, she measured it, and again, she measured between 12 and 14 inches, and she did some test locks in my hair, like three of them, and she did like two that would be an example of like sister locks and gave me kind of like a idea of the sizing. And with her, she only went down to a particular size for both sister locks and micro locks, but um, she didn't go any smaller than that. So with her, when I discussed with her about the pricing for micro locks, cause we discussed both micro locks and sister locks for micro locks, her price was like 1750 for my hair. And then for sister locks, her price would have been 2100. Now I didn't, uh, like I said, I didn't care about the grid for sister locks. I didn't care about the interlocking initially. I wasn't married to that. So I was really considering micro locks with the two strand twist method. Well, actually it was micro locks with that particular loctician. It was micro locks with interlocking. So that's what I was considering with that second loctician. So that was where the 1750 quote came from. It was like a $200 deposit to reserve the particular days. And then um, after you pay the $200 deposit, she wanted the rest in cash. That was kind of the issue I had because I don't take out that much money in cash and I just am very paranoid because I'm like, oh, I'm gonna take this money out in cash. Somebody gonna beat me upside the head and <laughs> it's just not gonna make it to her hands. So <laughs> so that was kind of the only thing because I was like, oh, can I pay you like PayPal or Zelle or Cash App? Like I got, you know, so many different ways to pay people, but like she wanted the rest in cash. So that was one thing, but it wasn't a deal breaker as far as the her requirement for the cash. Then the other thing was, what was the other thing? I just kind of, when I left there, I was okay. And I, I really did want to go with her because of her location. But I had a feeling I was going to end up going with the third person, which I did. So the third person, it requires me to take the interstate. <laughs> That's the thing. That's why I didn't want to go with her because I didn't want to take the interstate. But I had a long talk with God and prayed about it. And yeah, we got on the interstate. So, and then there were a few other things that I was like, mm, I don't really know. But then when I went and met with her, I sat in her chair. She was very professional. She had her consultant like list of things to ask and things to keep in mind as it related to my hair. So she went through her checklist, asked me what I was wanting, telling me that again, like she would only install the size that made sense for my hair density and texture. 
So, cause I told her what I was looking for, which I was looking for volume. Like I don't like the flat head type of look. And you know, I asked her, how can I accomplish volume? Because I see people with sister locks. I see people, some people with micro locks. And it's like, sometimes again, they kind of got like a flat head look. And so what I liked about her when I saw her initially on Instagram, she has very small locks herself. She's been locked for six years and her locks look so full. And like, she did hers herself. And I think when she, on her Instagram, she mentioned that people told her, is it related to her sizing that, oh yeah, they're gonna break. But her hair is down her back and she's like, I haven't had any breakage from the size of my locks. So, when um, I met with her, she was like, oh, there are very few people who can manage very tiny locks because of their hair density. So, you know, this is the smallest I can do. And she showed me pictures and showed me pictures of like different like time frames within that maturity process of those locks. So she did that. And then she said, okay, well, let me look through your hair because this is the smallest I can typically do, but sometimes I can do a bit smaller depending on the density, but most people can't manage that, that size because their density does not allow for it. She looked at my hair and she was like, girl, you can have whatever you want. <laughs> she said, you can have whatever you want. Like, I love locking hair that, that's like yours. So yeah, like, I wish my hair opened more doors for me, guys. Like, I know it's good hair. I know people tell me that. Like, oh, your hair is so pretty, this, that, and the other. But it has been a beast managing this hair for 14 years, guys. Like, I'm just saying. And that's why I've become the lazy natural because I don't like washing my hair. I don't like styling because when I leave my home, I look different when I come back. And I hate that. I don't value versatility. It is not a value of mine. I'm going to be honest. I value looking the same way that I did when I left the house. I wanna look the same when I come home and that never happens because of humidity, because of like, if, I'm, if I have my hair in a puff, which has actually probably been my favorite style, that's the style that I felt like I was gonna miss the most with locking my hair, even though there are ways to get around that with locks. But like, even when I look at my pictures of my puffs, I might insert a few here so you guys can see like my favorite pictures of my hair, which has been when my hair has been in a puff. Like even to obtain that type of style, my hair has to be shrunken to a certain extent to have a perfect puff, if that makes sense. Like I can't have my hair blown out and have a nice puff. It has to shrink for a few days for my puff to look right. And then because like I drive a Prius, like the ceiling only goes up so high. So then when I get into my vehicle and if my puff is a certain height, I have to readjust before I get out of my Prius because then I'm looking like a mushroom head. Like, you know, like it's just a lot to take into account. So for me, I just said I was gonna try something new. I was gonna be try something different with the upcoming years of my natural hair journey. And that's kind of the reason why I decided to do locks. And for me, yeah, micro locks made the most sense. When I went to her, she kind of explained to me what she could do, how she could do it, and the time frame. And then kind of some deciding factors with her. her her install price was quite a bit cheaper from the other, not necessarily the first person who I went to with Dallas, the virtual consultation, but it was cheaper than the second person, which I knew it would be. Uh, so her install price with, we decided on two strand twists and we also, yeah, decided on, yeah, two strand twists. And yeah, she was gonna wash and deep condition my hair before uh, she's began with her install process. So she's like, yeah, just come with your hair as it is. And I will wash deep condition and steam your hair before we get started. And my hair felt really, really good before we got started. I was like, girl, maybe I would have kept my loose natural hair if you were doing it. Like, so she did do that. She blew it out. And so she was willing to do all those different things before, me coming in so she's like just come as you are you don't have to do anything before you come and i will take care of that because i like to do my own wash and deep condition before i do my install so that was a plus then like yeah her pricing was 
It was $30 for the consultation for her. It was $50 for the second person. I didn't mention that. So the second person was $50. First person was $25, which was a virtual. Second person, $50, who was the sister loss consultant. And then the third person, who's the one that I went with, was $30. And the $30 is applied to the price of service if you choose her. So pay the $30. Then her deposit was $200, which also goes to the price of the service. So I'm already $230 into the cost. So the total cost was like 1100, I think it's 60, I think it was 1160 altogether. Um, and then, yeah, like I said, it was 230 that it was already on the table. And so like 900 something was my remaining price after, you know, for the installation, after paying the consultation and then the deposit, so yeah. It's like $930 that was left over for me to pay. And the install, she said with the size that I wanted, which was gonna be the smallest she could go, you know, feasibly was going to be two day install. So she said she could do it in two days and um, she would start at 9 a.m. and we would finish at like 8 p.m. on the first day. And which was what we did. We started, yeah, like around, she started with deep conditioning my hair 9 a.m. on a Tuesday and we finished the deep conditioning portion and then the parting portion probably around one o'clock broke for lunch so from one to two um broke for lunch and then when i came back at two o'clock she started doing the back and parting doing her parting of the back of my hair and we finished up at like 7 30 p.m and so I already knew it was gonna be a long day that Wednesday to get the rest of the install because she actually had an install, that she, another install she was doing Thursday. So she had to finish my hair. So then when I came in Tuesday, yeah, we started around 9.30 and yeah, we went to like 12 maybe or maybe one o'clock. We went to around one o'clock. And then after that, broke for lunch for an hour and when I came back, yeah, we went from like 2 p.m. I would say to like 9 or 10 p.m. <laughs> and guys, I was in quite a bit of pain. I do have chronic back pain. So I didn't complain though, because again, I want her to finish and get done and get yeah as much done as she can. So I didn't ask for any breaks. I didn't drink a lot of water because I do have, I, I have <laughs> issues with like going to the bathroom quite a bit. So I try not to drink any liquids when I'm out and about, but she did allow for bathroom breaks, but I really didn't take any breaks unless she wanted to take a break. So that first day, it was really cool. I really love her personality and her vibe. Like she's into like Korean dramas and all different types of things like me. So that's part of the reason I've been away from YouTube as well because I've been getting into a lot of Korean dramas. If you guys are interested in that, we can talk about that as well. But side note, so she has a very laid back personality. She's an introvert as I am. And I don't mind silence. And I was just getting back from Dallas when I got this install done. So I was quite tired. So we talked for a little bit, but the majority of Tuesday, she put on music and there was no talking. It was silence and I fell asleep, y'all. Like I was in and out of sleep and no questions were asked. It was just very relaxing. Then on Wednesday, she brought her television and so we couldn't watch K-dramas because she has to be able to see, like, I don't do the dub version anymore of K-dramas. I do the Korean, you know, the actual native language. And so, I, I mean, we could have watched some Korean dramas. However, she wouldn't have been able to actually watch them because you have to pay attention and look at the words. Because again, I don't watch dub versions. So we watched Grey's Anatomy. Like we got through all of season 12, pretty much of Grey's Anatomy. I have not watched Grey's Anatomy in years. But yeah, we watched all of season 12 of Grey's Anatomy by the time she finished. So yeah, like we again went from 9.30 to 1, broke from 1 to 2 for lunch, went from 2 p.m. to like 9.30, 10 p.m. And then she ordered dinner and she just ate for like 30 minutes. I wasn't eating anything else, but she ate for like 30 minutes. Then we went from... 10 30 to 5 a.m <laughs> and she was like very hip bubbly vibrant the whole time we were watching Grey's Anatomy we were commenting when it got to about two three in the morning 
guys my personality started showing so it's just like i'm watching some ignorant stuff on Grey's anatomy and i'm like what what you doing i'm like you know what this is why i watch stuff by myself because you know i don't want people to see this side of me and so i was just like i you know i had to apologize i'm like oh, i'm sorry she's like just laughing at me and so i gave her korean drama recommendation she said when you come back for your retie I, I need to have watched a few of these K-dramas you're talking about and we need to talk about them. I'm like, yes, you do need to watch these. These are the top three. And so, yeah, like I really enjoyed her thoroughly and I can't wait to go back and get my retie. So right now I'm going to go back in four weeks to get my hair retied. She's going to wash my hair, steam it, and also do the retie and kind of see what the condition of my hair is at that time. And then from there, she's gonna decide what schedule I will need to have for reties. So whether that's six weeks or eight weeks, if it can be pushed out to eight weeks, but I do have over 600 locks in my hair. So she did say that, I don't have an exact number. I'm not probably gonna count anytime soon. I know that's a big thing with the lock community as far as the number of your locks. She said it's over 600. So outside of that, I don't know a number, but um, yeah. So she anticipates the retie to take about five hours probably for the first one and having to go through and she is gonna wash my hair at that time. So yeah, that's kind of where we're at right now. That was the whole process of my decision-making overall. So hopefully that makes sense to you guys. Hopefully you guys enjoy that, you know, kind of life update as well as my new hair journey. So I haven't taken a whole lot of pictures, but this is kind of the size and this is what we're looking like. So you can't necessarily really tell. It's still, this is the beginning phase. So it still looks like loose natural hair. But yeah, all I've been doing uh, since Thursday is I've just been putting a hair bonnet on and then I get up in the morning, I shake my hair and I just fluff it and I go. So she told me not to do anything to it. So I've just been kind of running my fingers through it because since it's so small, like what the paperwork that she gave me is that you do have to like kind of run your fingers through it so the locks don't marry, you know, kind of get intertwined with one another. So it's good to run your fingers through it. Not all the time and consistently, but it is good to run your fingers through it. So that's what I have been doing, but I will be glad when my hair completely locks. Like I know this phase right here, people love it when your hair is like loose and all of that, but I will actually like it when it completely locks because I'm still very much prone to like breakage and single strand knots at this phase. So, and I cannot stand these single strand knots. <laughs> So yeah, like that's kind of where we're at guys. And this is where, you know, what I've been doing. Actually, I've done all this in the past week as far as getting my hair locked, getting back from Dallas. This has all been in the past week. So this has kind of occupied my time as well. I started a K-drama when I was in Dallas because that's just my common temptation right now. I'm, I'm on another K-drama that I'm like seven episodes in. If you guys have any recommendations, let me know for other Korean dramas. There's a book that I'm gonna be starting soon because one of my favorite authors, Harlan Coben, he released another book. I think it's called Think Twice because I got the alert about it with my favorite fictional character, Myron Bolitar. It's back in action after eight years. So I need to get this book and read it. I've read some of the reviews on it and it's really good. Uh, so I will be doing that. But other than that, I've been loving Korean dramas. They're so wholesome, they're cheesy. They're funny, they're so funny, and I've been loving them. So my top Korean dramas, if you guys are interested, before we leave off the video, just to give you something to think about, something to watch. Top ones, my top three that I gave to my loctician as well. The Glory, that came out last year in 2023, took me by surprise, such a good revenge plot. So The Glory is one, is probably my top favorite. Second one, I just watched this one like two, three weeks ago. And this is why I can't film any, I could not film any videos because I was so distraught. It's okay not to be okay. I don't know why nobody told me about this K-drama. Like I don't see a lot of reaction videos on it. And maybe because nobody wanted to, you know, be out here with their feelings like this on the internet. Because yeah, it caught me too. I was messed up for a week after watching it, but it was so, so good. Um, essentially dealing with trauma and being a caregiver. And so that's, 
I'm just gonna call it that as far as where that, it goes into a lot of different places, but it essentially is about managing trauma and being a caregiver. So that's the one that I think that one competes with the top for the glory, but I do love the glory more. And then the third one I would say is Flower of Evil. That one was really, really good as well. A detective married to a suspected serial killer. So that's a really good one. Um, some other ones I've watched recently, I just finished a business proposal earlier this week and I started watching that one in Dallas. That one was so fun, 12 episodes. And um, I'm watching another one, but I don't wanna talk about that one right now. I'm still trying to figure out how I feel about it. So <laughs> anyway, guys, hopefully you enjoyed this kind of um, like catching up and about talking about my lock journey. So I don't know why I'm going to post this because I don't think there's going to be much editing. So it is going to be a longer video, longer content. So hopefully some people do watch it. Hopefully you guys do enjoy it. But if you do enjoy this type of content, make sure you give it a thumbs up. Also make sure you do share it with anyone else who likes this type of content, who likes, you know, hair videos, life updates, Korean dramas, all the things. And also before you leave, make sure you do subscribe to the channel. You do that by hitting the red button below and the bell next to it. So you're notified when I do upload future videos. And again, guys, thank you so very much for watching. I really appreciate it and look forward to talking to you soon. Bye guys.